there's been so much going on, it's still going on. So again, keep those eyes and those ears open so that you'll just be on top of things, okay? Praise the Lord. The announcements are as follows. Just be aware that um, the youth choir rehearsals are still scheduled for the first and second Saturdays of the month at 11 a.m. Choir rehearsal, the adult choir rehearsal is at noon and you're more than welcome to um, come and join them. Uh, Bible study is scheduled for noon on Wednesdays here at the church. Youth church is scheduled here on the third and fourth Sundays at 11 a.m. Okay. Thirsty Thursday, Thirsty Thursday is online. It's online, okay, every Thursday at 7. You're more than welcome to please feel free to join in. And if you're already online, you know how to access it. But if you're sitting here in the sanctuary, uh, do feel free to go to sbclove.com or ssbclove.com. Local businesses are invited um, to check with the church just in case there's something you'd like to uh, share. Graduations are taking place even now. They're taking place now. Um, so there are scholarships that are being, um, if you'd like to contribute toward a scholarship, again, please uh, see those at the church uh, regarding that. Sanctuary, there's a, san there's a, a seminary um, that's taking place here at Sunnyside, and there are some spots still available. So check with Reverend uh, Milton uh, regarding that. Reverend Norris Milton, that is. Image Summer Camp. Image Summer Camp. If you're here, uh, just note that the packets are outside in the foyer. Quite a bit of information is just shared with the kids. They have access to field trips, uh, outdoor games and sports, arts and crafts, theater, dance, uh, group bonding, activities, drones, and robotic training. At the same time, photo and graphic design, video and broadcast production, audio and podcast, recording, and even more. Would you believe that the cost of that is $1 a day? Did you hear me? $1 a day? I don't know if any of you know about the cost of child care, but $1 a day? or $5 a week, and sponsorships are even available. So please don't hesitate to pass that information on. And again, outside in the foyer, the application forms are even available. Pick one up, pass it to someone who you feel just might take advantage of that. Tutoring will return uh, back in the fall. Free computer classes are held here on Thursdays from 12 until 4 p.m. And if you complete a total of eight hours, you get a chance, I'm gonna say that, you get a chance um, to get um, a, um, a computer of some sort, okay? But again, just be aware that that is a possibility that's available. For some reason, I tend to get information handed to me and I feel like I'm being selfish if I'm not passing it on. The notice is the City of Los Angeles Youth Development um, Department, they have a Youth Expo 2024. Come join them for the students that's ages tw uh, 15 to 25. They have an on-site hiring and employment resources. Again, that is next Saturday, um, the 22nd at Los Angeles Trade Tech College. I have four flyers that were put in my hand. I don't know four kids that are 15 to 25 years old, but if you know someone, please ask me for this flyer. Again, it is on-site hiring. The last time I made an announcement like that, somebody from Sunnyside benefited from it. So again, please do get that, okay? Again, fathers, praise God for you. Praise God for you. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, Sunnyside. How y'all feeling this morning? 
Good, good. Amen. How y'all feel about it? Good Lord waking y'all up this morning. Anybody glad that God decided to wake you up this morning and touch your body and gave you a mind to come into the house of the Lord today, y'all? We are here celebrating Jesus Christ, celebrating Father's Day, celebrating life, celebrating you. And we're going to have praise and worship, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come in this place to change somebody, to set somebody free, and to give somebody new life. Amen. So as we say our call to worship as we're standing, we will go into our praise to worship. And the call to worship reads, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. Amen. Put our hands together. How many of you know that our God, our Lord, is awesome? Amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Okay, all right. Lord,
Come on, y'all. Let's go ahead and give God his praise in this place today. How many of you know that God is an awesome God? I say to anybody here know that God is an awesome God. Come on, y'all. Sing with us. You are awesome. Blessed be the rock. 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 Blessed be the rock.
before y'all clap your hands in this place today. Clap your hands in this place today and give God some glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sunnyside. I'm Deacon Glover. I have the honor to read the word of God. And there's a correction. The word of God comes from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 8 through 10. And it reads as follows. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And may God bless the hearers, readers, doers, preachers, and teachers of his word. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lord. thankful for who was ever there for you to get you there but most importantly the man above so heavenly father we thank you this morning we thank you for guiding us here to get us here safely safe passage as we got here this pilot this morning we ask you to pray for the ones that couldn't make it this morning that's at home that's not feeling well just tired and weak from the days of working all week long. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, for pumping that blood through us, that letting that air blow through our veins, through our, through our lungs, and letting us rise. Rise this morning, have your heavenly angels that came and tapped on our shoulders and woke us up to inspire us to keep us moving to keep us going, to pull the loved ones that we have under, underneath us, that we have to get them there and guide them and give them strength. But Heavenly Father, we thank you all the time. Well, you're so good to us. You are so good to us. Even when we think that you, you know, we, we, we're down sometimes. You think that you're down, you just look around. Look around and see the ones that don't have it. See the ones that don't have it that's out there in that streets, in the bad elements, in the good elements, when we call good heat, well, we can turn on that AC or a fan. They can't do it. They got to get a get up on a, a cardboard box or get up on a tree. But we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, all the time, man. I'm not here if it wasn't for you. We're not here if it wasn't for you. We ask you to cover us all in the blood of Jesus. Give us good health at all times. Strengthen us. I tell you, Lord, I tell you, everything that I have that I need, that you said you will take care of, I, th I throw right on your shoulder and let you take care of it. We're here for a short time on this world. It seems long, but we're here for a short time. And at that time, we must take time to enjoy and speak and love and be thankful. Be thankful for the ones who, 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 who got you to where you are right now. That may be something very small, but you got to be thankful all the time. Just be thankful. That person that, that got you where you are right now did something special in your life. Well, you could have went left and they kept you going right. Just think about that. I think about that all the time. 
So Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us today and woke us up. And thank you for Father's Day today. Because if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you, you are the Father. You are our Father. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is now time for tithes and offering. Please stand and join me. I'm reading the offertory scripture since it's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 8. Ready? Begin. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Would everyone please remain standing, face the wall, follow the instructions of the ushers. Everybody say bless. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Bless those who had to give and those who had not to give. We pray that you'll bless this offering and use it for the building of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Amen. Before we go into our sermon at song, uh, we're starting something new at the church. We want to continue that. And if everyone could stand for me. Do we have any visitors in the house? Any visitors? Okay. What we'd like to do. Y'all leave them alone. I know Brother Philip. If you don't want to say nothing, raise your hand, Brother Philip. Hey, Amen. You want to say something about it? There's someone behind me. Your, your, your knee's trying to get you to talk. Oh, I didn't even see it. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, first giving uh, reference and honor to God, to the pastor, Sunnyside Baptist Church. I feel like a member because my sister and niece is here. It's not my first time here, but yet and still. I bring you greetings from True Vine Baptist Church, located in Inglewood, California. Pastor Austin F. Williams. Associate Minister Todd Frazier. 
I bring you greetings. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as a lot of members we see, we some we haven't seen for a while, but we're glad to see all of you, right? So look at each other, hug each other, let's greet each other in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. How y'all doing this morning? Say, how y'all doing this morning? I feel you real good. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, choir, for that good praise and worship. That feel good to me, y'all. All of them feel good. And I was reminded in those songs just um, why it felt good because I really love Jesus, y'all. I think that's why I feel good. Because I really love Jesus more than anything. I love Jesus. I say more than anything. I love Jesus. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love my father. My, my father here in L.A., my father in Georgia, have a Father's Day pops. But I love Jesus more than anything in this world. And I feel like my heavenly father, I want to say happy Father's Day to you because I love you, Jesus. More than anything, more than my house, more than my job, more than my money, more than the clothes, the nice shoes. I, I love Jesus, y'all. It's like, whoo, man. When I think about it, y'all, it's like, I just worship God and I adore him. And I just want to tell you, Father God, right now, Lord, I love you more than anything. Is there anybody testimony in this place today that you love Jesus more than anything? Say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Can we just put a, a spirit of worship in here right now? I worship and adore. Somebody just tell him right now. Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything. It's a real simple song. Come on, church, sing it with me. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, let's make it sound real good to him. Say, I worship. I worship and uh, say, I just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Now, if you just sit for a second and just think about why you love Jesus more than anything, think about the times when, when you really needed a Savior, when you needed a, something physically to happen for you, something in real life, something that, that, was, that was really bothering you in, in life. Now, I'm not talking about spiritual right now. I'm talking about just walking this natural life, and you really needed God to do something. And you just begin to start praying in your mind. Uh, you just start talking to yourself in your mind, and all of a sudden, you start saying, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, can you make it happen? God, I need you. Jesus, please. Jesus, please. Jesus, please. Sometimes all we can say is just, Jesus, this Jesus and and all of a sudden it seemed like those things that were put up in the spiritual when you open your mouth and call on the name of Jesus it's like something happened in the spiritual realm and and you start walking and moving before you know it in the natural realm things have shifted things have changed things have have the things you pray for have became true it's almost like Lord I, I, I prayed to you and you really answered my prayer Maybe that's just me because because I remember times where I'm like, God, I really need this to happen right now. God, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I need the O Lord. I need the O Lord every single day, every single hour. Lord, I need thee. And in the natural, it happens. That's why I worship Jesus. That's why I give God the glory. That's why I open my mouth and say hallelujah because I know about times when I needed God and he showed up. He showed up right on time. It wasn't when I wanted it, but all of a sudden he showed up right on time. And I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. And I give reverence to you, Holy Ghost, because you show up for me all the time. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Because you are a good God. You good, man. You so good. You so good. And I praise you. And I give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to I wanna confess of a sin that I committed this morning. And no, I'm not finna be like Tony Evans. <laughs> My bad. I didn't mean to put that out there. But I am going to confess of a sin that happened this morning. And I'm about to throw the people who, uh, who employed me to do this sin, I'm about to throw y'all under the bus. Because it ain't make no sense. How when we went down in that fellowship hall this morning to celebrate those fathers, all my fathers, how y'all doing? We went down to fellowship hall and it was a spread laid out. I'm talking about a spread. Bacon, sausage, grits, eggs. Whew, you about to make me shout. Waffles. And I'm sitting there eating chicken and, and I get up and get in line. They said, no, 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 sit down. I said, oh, Lord. They brought a plate to me, Pastor. Woo, we, Pastor say mine was ready. I want to say thank you on behalf of all the fathers here at Sunnyside Baptist Church to everyone, all the women, all the ladies, anybody who had anything to do with the brunch this morning or the breakfast this morning. We really, really greatly appreciate you. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. And, and I know this California, and I've grown to like turkey bacon. However... Boy, that pork bacon this morning, boy, <laughs> that thing was all right. And I'm asking God to forgive me because I think I almost ate too much. But we all right. So thank you all so much for that. We really, really appreciate that and thank you. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers here in this place today. I really want to give you a shout out. And all the fathers that are tuning in today on our YouTube channel because um, it's not an easy task being a father. And, and, and I can't even imagine what it takes to be a mother. I don't want to imagine what it takes to be a mother, but I am walking in the shoes every single day of fatherhood. And, and, and not just in my, my own kids, as an educator, as a, as a servant of the Most High Jesus Christ and the, the ministries that we have here at this church. Those of you who are here at this church, whether you got your own kids or not, you are fathering a community of children around this neighborhood. And it's not a easy task. But God, only God is allowing us to, to really pour into not just physically and emotionally, but spiritually into the youth of this, this community. And um, I just appreciate you, fathers, for that, man. Um, I appreciate the sacrifice of you getting up every morning. You know, whatever your occupation may be, whatever your job may be, however much money you may make, you, you make the conscious decision every single day to get up and go out and try to make it happen with Christ on our side. And it's been a lot of times I could speak for myself where I've tried to make it happen on my own. And, and I don't know about you fathers, but I think we all can have some of those same sentiments where, where we want to make sure that it gets taken care of. We want to make sure that it happens. We want to make sure that whatever that baby or that child is asking for, even our wives, what they're asking for, that we're able to provide. And it's not easy for a man to do that, let alone a black man in this America. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of your sacrifices as a father. Um, again, shout out to my father and my, my spiritual father and, and, and my, my L.A. father. I thank you, Pastor Redmond, for just, just being a, a leader amongst leaders, you know, for, for not wavering, not, um, not listening to the noise. Like you, you, you seek ye first the kingdom and you, speak, you, you seek spiritual guidance. And, and I thank God that he allowed me to uh, just be under your tutelage. I really do. And, and I'm grateful for that. Um, so. Without further ado, let us get into the word today. Can we do that? I don't know if you've been following us um, on Thursdays with the Thirsty Thursday podcast. Um, it's been life-changing for me, um, and I can assure you a lot of the panel that's on the Thirsty Thursdays podcast, they, um, they have that same sentiment. We talk all the time. I'd rather be before the broadcast or even right after. Um, the crew sometimes tell us it's time to go. Like, y'all got to hurry up and get out of here because it's so much rich knowledge and, and life-changing information that's going on in Thirsty Thursdays. And um, this past week, we were talking about salvation. And, and I'm going to do the same thing I do on Thursdays. If you don't have a copy of this book right here, The Christian Basics, which is the 66 Essential Truths Explained and Applied, please get one of these booklets. Um, reach out to the church office. We'll make sure you get this. But it's some really good um, basic information on what it means to be a Christian. And today, the word that's going to come forth 
is literally giving you the the excitement behind why we want to be Christians and why we should be Christians. Um, I know a lot of people growing up, that's just all you knew. You knew to go to church. You knew uh, about Jesus dying for our sins. Um, you knew that you need to be saved or if not, you're going to go to hell and all like that stuff is just, that's, that's taught to us uh, for, for most of us. I don't want to say that's taught to everyone, but I really want to take a deep dive into what it really means to be saved because we, we do a lot in the community. We do a lot in church and we talk a lot about what God can do for us, but we, we rarely talk a lot about what God has done already for us and what he did for us when he died on Calvary. And um, it's a lot of people in this world right now, whether they wanna say it or whether we believe it or not, they're not seeking silver and gold. They're not seeking food. They're not seeking shelter. They're seeking peace and they're seeking some place to feel safe and to be saved. And as Christians, we have to continue the, the narrative of Jesus Christ will save your life. We have to keep that understanding because a lot of people think that you can do it without Jesus. A lot of people think that, you know, if we just go to God in prayer and we just say, God, 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 which God we know is the Father Almighty, but none of this that we believe, nothing, nothing life-changing is going to happen to you if you do not believe in Jesus Christ. So let's go to God in prayer real quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for just allowing us to be here today, God. And as the word come forth, I ask that you move me out of the way, your humble servant, and that you allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that your, your, your tongue and your, your words come out of me, God. That whatever is said today is, is edifying to your people and is life-changing for someone, God. That you break ch uh, chains, that you loose bondages, God, and that you allow us to live free. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, thank you, Deacon Glover, for, for reading the uh, scripture today, which was found in Ephesians 2. Um, looking at verse 8 and 10. And Ephesians, um, when, this is a letter that Paul wrote to the people of Ephesus. And um, I was doing some really in-depth research um, over the week about Ephesus and where it's located. And um, just, just trying to get an idea of what Paul was really doing when he was going out and he was establishing churches. Or he was going out just preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we all know that Paul was a sinner. Paul was someone who literally, prior to being Paul, prior to his life changing, he was Saul. And he was literally a Pharisee who was going out torturing anybody who proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one day, that sinner, that, that guy who was uh, literally killing Christians, encountered Jesus. And it's something about when you have an encounter with Jesus that is completely life-changing. And not just when Paul did it, and not even, even, even in the Bible times, like even today, if you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, it will completely change your life. So in, the, in this uh, letter or this book of Ephesians, uh, Paul is really breaking down what it is to be a Christian and why we should be a Christian. And, and, and here in chapters uh, 1 through actually uh, chapter 1, it talks about just, just kind of contrasting your old life and your new life. So when you, you accept Jesus Christ into your life, it says when, before then you were dead, okay? You were also enslaved or you were objects of wrath or the wrath of God. You also walked among the disobedient. In essence, you were under the domain or the dominion of Satan, the devil himself. But once you decide Jesus Christ is, is your Lord and your Savior, what happens is you take on what's called a new life. And although you were dead, you're now alive. Although you were enslaved, you're now enthroned. Although you may have been a, a object of God's wrath, because we got to understand that God is still a God who will put his wrath on those who are not living right and doing right. Now that you accepted Jesus Christ, you are up under what we call grace. And I think it's important that we, we keep that message going because so many people are living a life that is uh, literally a life of, of death. Like you're doing things, you're around things, you're, you're, you're into things that at the end of the day, it might not kill you now, it might not kill you tomorrow, but it's going to lead to a path of destruction, which is what sin is. Sin leads to death. That's the wages of sin. But in Jesus Christ, we are liberated through those, uh, away from those sins through simply believing. Okay, now when I looked up salvation, 
it says that salvation is a presentation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. And that's just a basic definition. Salvation means that you are being removed from being harmed, you are being removed from being ruined, and you are being removed from any type of loss, okay? But the theological or the, the biblical definition is that you are delivered from sin and the consequences of sin, and it's only brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. So if you look here, it's, it's three main points I want to I convey today as we talk about salvation. The first thing is it, with salvation is that you must understand that we all, every human being, are born sinners. And if you don't believe that you're a sinner, then you're sinning then. You're lying. We're all born up under a sinful nature. We all are born up under a nature where we want to please our flesh. We want our flesh to, to feel good. We want to, um, uh, again, going back to downstairs, when I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. Like, it feels good to, to eat and eat and eat and keep eating and keep eating, all right? So we satisfy in that flesh. Sometimes it feels good to do other stuff. It feels good to go out and get a little drink and keep drinking and keep drinking until you belligerent. Like, and then you realize on the back end, it don't feel that good. You indulging in all that food, but in the back end, it don't feel that good. Like, and we get caught up so much in the world in indulging in sin, and we know that society is literally pushing sin in every avenue they can and make it look right. But we indulge in it and indulge, and it feels good at the moment, but at some point we realize it is death. It is detrimental. It's going to kill us. That's why it's important to understand that we have to live outside of sin. And the only way you can live outside of sin is to have the Spirit of God in you. And the Spirit of God is in you through salvation of Jesus Christ. Romans 3.23 say, all have sinned. And falling short of the glory of God. And I think that's important for all of us to understand because we use that all the time. And sometimes we use it as a crutch. We get out here and we do our sins. Well, well God know my heart. You know, we all sin and falling short. And we use the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ as a crutch, not realizing that that is detrimental because eventually that grace and that mercy will be removed from you. But you have to understand that no one is perfect. No one is, 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 is here living as a complete saint. You know, we've all sinned and fallen short. And, and it, it's crazy because uh, in Luke 5, Christ was uh, speaking and he was talking uh, to the Pharisees and, and Sadducees. And it was more so he was like, basically, why would I, a physician, worry about someone that's healed? Why would a doctor take someone who's not sick and try to fix them? Basically, he was saying, like, I didn't come here to deal with the righteous. I came so that the sinful people, those who are in sin, can have salvation and those people can be saved. And a lot of times we want to just deal with those who are righteous or self-righteous or those people who are just in our cliques. And we overlook those who are lost, those who don't know God, those who are searching and seeking for something. And we don't go out and grab the sinners and love on them. I didn't say go out and bring them into the church. We ought to take church that's within us to them. So Christ saying, I'm not here to be in your synagogues. I'm not here to sit up with the priest and the, and the preachers and just, I'm not here for that. Although that's a, it's a place for that, I am here to go out and to compel those who don't know who God is, that God loves you, that no matter what you're doing, whether you're a prostitute, whether you're a tax collector, whether you're a dope addict, whether you're a dope boy, whatever the case may be, God loves you and he wants to give you a new life. And the only way you can get this new life is if you receive the salvation of Jesus Christ. That's what we have to be preaching and teaching. So we got to understand that we're all sinners. The second thing is that there are two avenues or two lanes when it comes to salvation. And it's almost like anything else in this world. There's a positive side of salvation and there's a negative side to salvation. You say, well, how is salvation negative? I'll tell you why. Okay. Let's start with the positive first. If you believe that Jesus Christ died and he was sacrificed for each of us to live, the Bible say that you are saved. And through you being saved, you are now away from the, the, the torment 
and the damnation that's going to come to those who don't believe. So in essence, the positive side of having salvation is life and life everlasting. The negative side of not having salvation is death and turmoil for eternity. Simple as that. It's life or it's death. Either you receive the salvation of Jesus Christ and live or you disagree with the salvation of Jesus Christ. You say it don't take all that. You say we don't need to do that. Oh, I'm going to just go and I'm going to live right. I'm going to do right. My works are good. And you, if you don't receive Jesus in the salvation of the Holy Spirit, then you must understand that there is damnation for you. But if you say, Father God, I love you and I receive you and I believe that you are the son of God, I believe that you died for my sins and I know that you woke up and you got up on that third day and you alive and well right now, the salvation and the promise that God gave to all of his people is yours. That's the positive side of it. And the last thing, which I think is extremely important, is that salvation is a gift. There is absolutely nothing you can do other than have faith, and believe to receive salvation. So many people think that my works is what's going to get me into heaven. My philanthropy is what's going to get me into heaven. The fact that I give my tithes and I give my offering and, and I'm at church every Sunday or, or I'm giving to the homeless or I'm helping people out. We think those things are what's going to get us into heaven. We get out here and we, we, we'll ride by. We may see a homeless person and, and we got a piece of chicken that we don't want to eat. And we say, hey, do you want this? And we get on our cameras and take a picture and say, look at look what God is doing. But the whole time we're doing it for self-gratification. We're doing it for folks to give us kudos. We're doing it to be boastful. Let's look right here in Ephesians 2 and, and, and uh, 10. It shows us exactly why we shouldn't do that and, and why that's not a way of God. Right here it says, verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not yourselves, it is a gift of God, not works, lest anyone should boast. Basically, what it's saying is nothing to do with what you do. The salvation of Jesus Christ has absolutely nothing to do with what you are doing. It's simply because Christ decided to come down here and die for us. And if you believe that, you have that salvation. It's not about boasting. It's not about saying, look at me, look what I'm doing, or, or look what I've done. It's nothing about that. That's not going to get you into heaven. What's going to get you into heaven is simply saying, Father, I believe that Jesus is your son, and I believe that he died for me, and I believe that he is alive right now. That will get you into heaven. But this is what happens. Although your works is not going to get you salvation, look at what happened when you obtained salvation. Verse 9 say, not works, but lest you should boast. And then here in 10 it said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is what's so interesting, and this is the fine line between I'm doing things because I'm saved or I'm doing things because I want people to think I'm saved. See, once you receive the salvation of Jesus Christ, although you might not have a lot, you're going to want to do something or tell somebody about Jesus. Although you may not, may not have the riches and the fame, you're going to want to go out and help somebody. If you see someone who is down and needs some help because of the salvation and the grace that God put on your life, you're going to extend that same grace. Because of the salvation and the mercy that God put on your life, you're going to come and you're going to say, okay, we're going to give our clothes to the homeless or give our clothes to those who need it. Because you are saved and have salvation, you're going to come show up and say on Fridays, we'll give our food to those who are less fortunate because of the, I'm saved and I feel that God is taking care of me because of that I now want to take care of his people it's not the opposite opposite I don't come and say I'm going to give this food and then hopefully at the end of the day God gonna say you did a good job by serving so I'm going to give you life everlasting no once you say God I love you and I know who you are and I believe that you are the son of God then he will give you salvation. And something happens when salvation comes inside of you. You then want to want to help out your fellow neighbor. You then want to pray for those who need prayer. You then want to give to those who don't have. You then hear the Holy Spirit talk to you. And although you may only have $20 in your pocket, the Spirit say, give it to that person. And your salvation know that although I'm giving this to him, my Father in heaven has everything. So this is not the last of it. I'm not worried about this little money because God is going to give it back to me. 
So the works on the back end of salvation are the fruits of salvation, not the work on the front ends. Your salvation is what's going to push you unto those good works. And as I'm getting ready to close, it's a few things we got to understand here. Because when you have salvation, there's evidence of salvation in your life. In 1 John, the second chapter, actually 1 John <laughs> throughout the whole chapter, gives you an understanding of what that evidence looked like. See, when you have salvation, the first thing that shows that's evident that you have salvation is a moral test of obedience. Meaning that you have good character, you have good reputation, and you're obedient to what thus says the Lord. You're not moving on your own accord. You're not moving on what you want to do. You literally understand that though I'm, although I'm saved, I have to hear what God is telling me. And your moral test of obedience shows that you obtain salvation from Jesus Christ. The second thing is your social test. How do you treat your neighbor? How do you treat your brother? How do you treat your sister? How do you treat your mom? How do you treat your dad? How do you treat those who are, 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 are less than or, or, or perceived as less than? How do you treat those who are perceived as more than? Your moral compass is going to show just how much salvation you really have inside of you. The way you love your neighbor as yourself is going to show just how much brotherly love and salvation you have inside of you. And the last thing that shows that you have salvation is that you are okay with going out and talking about, preaching about, teaching about the doctrine of who Jesus Christ is. Because if you're not going out here saying that Jesus saved me and Jesus changed my life and he can do the same thing for you, then your salvation is not valid. Because the salvation that we get is simply through Jesus Christ. It's not through your works. It's not through your, your wealth. It's not through anything outside of Jesus, I accept that you came to this earth. That you walked this earth for 33 years. And then one day, as you were praying in this garden, this guy who was supposed to be your friend, this guy who was supposed to be your homie, your partner, he was supposed to ride with you. He was supposed to go to bat for you. He got caught up in money, in selfishness, in greed. And he had the nerve to go tell the enemy exactly where you were going to be. And as those folks came down and picked you up from that garden, you knew what time it was. You knew the sacrifice that was about to make. And although you could have called on angels, legions of angels, to cease and desist this whole thing, you decided, you made a conscious decision to say, I'm going to go with the will of God. And Jesus Christ, you went and got beat for me. They put thorns on your head. They spat on you. In your weakness, you took this heavy cross. And you bared this cross and you walked down that dirty road up to Calvary. And they put you up on that cross. And on that cross, although you could have came down, you didn't. You decided to stay up on that cross. And even as you on that cross, you got somebody to the left of you taunting you, saying, well, if you're really who you say you are, get us down from here. But there was another on the right side that said, just remember me. And I don't know about you, but that's all I'm asking God right now. I know I'm, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But when that time comes, Father God, if you can, just remember me. Because I want to see Jesus. I want to go to heaven. And Jesus looked as he was dying and he said, you will be with me in paradise. This day, you will be with me in paradise. So you may be going through turmoil. You may be going through hell here on earth. But through salvation of Jesus Christ, I can assure you, 
you are going to see paradise. And if you really believe what that salvation is, like David said, you won't have to wait until you leave here to see paradise. David said, I would have lost faith had I not believed. I will see the glory of God here on this earth. So the moment that you receive Jesus and, and receive that salvation, you are stepping into paradise. But as you gave up that ghost, and they put you in that tomb, and they shut that tomb up thinking that because this rock is heavy, this load is heavy, that this burden that I'm bearing is heavy. They thought you didn't have enough power to carry the weight of the rock. Just like you got enough power to carry the weight of my problems. Just like you got enough power to carry the weight of my habits. Just like you have enough power to carry the work, weight of my, of my wrongdoings. And you got up on the third day with all power. Not some power, but all power. And right now, you sit at the right hand of God. And when I get on my knees and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you. You do this. Hey, Pops, milk needs you down there. When I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, I need you to do something for me. You say this. Hey, hey, God, oh, oh, bro down there needs you. When they say, God, I don't know how, I'm a, how this is going to happen, but Jesus, if you can, just, just see about me. You say, hey, um, can I send the Holy Spirit down there to uh, make sure he know that I'm with him and I will never leave or forsake him? See, that's what salvation do. You, you go through problems and you go through tribulations, but salvation reassures you that you are not in this thing alone. Hallelujah. That Jesus is with you. The promise he gave us of the Holy Spirit, it comforts us and it's here right now. And if you don't know who Jesus is or, or you don't have that salvation or, or you're looking for something to give you comfort, give you peace, give you joy. If you're able to right now as we're standing, I urge you to accept the salvation of Jesus Christ by simply accepting him as your Lord and your Savior. And if you're in this church today and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, woo, <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost. If you don't know who Jesus is today, I urge you right now to come down and let us introduce to you a Savior who can completely change your life. Who can completely flip your life upside down. I'm talking about shape, all of the baggage, all of the problems, all of the issues. He could take it away right now. And all you got to do is believe. It may seem crazy, but I'm telling you right now, you got to have crazy faith to, to live in this world, that world we're living in right now. And I'm crazy enough to believe that Jesus has changed my life completely. I'm crazy enough to believe that it's only through Jesus Christ that I have salvation. It's only through Jesus Christ that I'm going to go to heaven. I'm crazy, y'all. But I also think it's crazy to not believe. And to know that in your sins, you are walking down a road of damnation. You are walking down a road of death. You are literally killing yourself because you don't want to believe in Jesus Christ. Well, I believe in Jesus today. And I'm here to testify how good he is. You are looking at a walking miracle. Matter of fact, if you look in the mirror, I can assure you, you are looking at a walking miracle. It's nothing that you did to get you to the place that you are right now. It's only through the power of Jesus Christ. Maybe you know Jesus and you need a church home where you can fellowship and that you can grow spiritually. Sunnyside Baptist Church, as pastors say, we ain't such a much. But I could tell you this, we love the Lord Jesus Christ with all our heart and our soul. And like unto this, we love our neighbor just like we love ourselves. It is not just through talk, it's through evidence. It's evident that here at Sunnyside you love your neighbor. 
It's evident here at Sunnyside that you love, love those around you. You love the least of them. You love the poor. You love those who don't have. It's evident. And if you want to be a part of that, we open the doors of the church today so that you can join this fellowship. And you can assist us in building the kingdom of God right here on 94th and Budlong. Amen. And lastly, if you just need prayer, you need God to, to do something for you. You need to go to Jesus so he can lean over and say, hey, Father, they need you down there. Hey, Father, they got something for you to do. What you think? Can I do this? If that's you today and you need prayer, please come down. Let us pray with you. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, that he is in the midst of it. And I can tell you right now, ain't nothing, there's no money, there's nothing that you can pay for the peace that surpasses the understanding that Jesus Christ gives you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. See, that's not how the story is. In three days, he rose. That's love. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. That's love. Can we go back to they hung him high? Because we need to know that part. They hung him high. They hung. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. Woo. Lord, I thank you for me you died. That's love. See, we all just want some love in this world. Say, that's love. Say, that's not how. Say the story is in three days he rose again that's love Lord I thank you for loving us today say that's love Whew. Lord God right now in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you right now God We praise you right now, Father God. You are a mighty good God. You are a real good God. You are so good to us, God. Even in times when we don't even deserve your goodness, God, you give it to us. In moments where we don't deserve your grace, you give it to us. In times where we don't deserve your mercy, you give it to us, God. Your unmerited favor, God, you give it to us, God. Lord, we say thank you today. And God, right now, we stand in the gap for your people. Not those who are righteous or those who think they're righteous, but for those who are sinners, God. Those who are, 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 are mentally in captive, God. Those who are looking for a savior and don't know where to look, God. We come on behalf of those individuals right now, God. And we pray right now, God, that you will go and you will speak, you will touch, and you will set them free right now, God. We ask that you give them an encounter right now, wherever they are, whether they in the, the Mari of the Mari clay, or they are sitting up on the highest pedestal, God. We ask that you go to them right now and give them a, a inclination, a, a, a moment that they know without a shot of a doubt they have met Jesus Christ, that their life has changed. God, let them start crying and they don't know why they're crying. Let them feel your spirit and they think someone's around. Let them hear you talking. They don't see nobody. Let them know that you are there with them, God. And as you talk to them, God, I ask that you give them direction on the way they should go. I ask that you give them clarity on how they should live. I ask that you free them from any guilt, any, any bondage, anything that they feel like they are less than, God. We ask that you liberate their spirit so that they can stand up bold and walk and say but for God I'm going to live and for God I'm going to die God we thank you because Jesus you have the power to change anything in anybody God so we ask that you send your spirit right now wherever they are we ask right now if anyone here in this church have a prayer God that they need you to see about that you go sit with them God and that you strategically show them that you are with them and that you have never left them and that you will come and see about them, God. Let them have a testimony that's so powerful and so life-changing, God, that somebody else is blessed. 
by the words of their testimony, God. God, you are a miracle worker. You are life changing. You are a life saver, God. So we thank you today for your healing power. We thank you today for your strong power. We thank you for your anointing that breaks shoes, God. We thank you today, God, because you are good and your mercy is everlasting. And your truth endures not just to one generation, not just to the next generation, but all generations, God, your truth is true. And that is that you are the Son of God, that you did come down to this earth, that you were crucified, that you did get buried, but you are risen right now, God, and you are sitting at the right hand of God, and you are in a seated for us God you are looking out for us God you are watching over us God you are protecting us God you are keeping us God and there's no devil in hell that can go through what you say God we thank you today father we give you honor and glory and praise and it's in Jesus Christ's mighty name we say amen 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 can we give God a hand clap of praise in this place today hallelujah come on somebody say they hung him high they hung him high, they stretched him wide, he hung his head, for me he died, that's love, that's love, that's love, that's that's not how story. At this time, we want to do our Father's Day recognition, um, and we often know that Father's Day gets, let's say, less publicity than Mother's Day, um, but we hope that you guys feel the love today um, and know that you are honored, loved, and valued. Um, and before we start, um, I want to... Um, present to my father, pastor here, um, the first gift, um, because as a daughter growing up, I think knowing that you have a father that's there for you, you don't take a lot of stuff because you know you could call your dad, and you also know how you should be treated. So thank you for allowing me and my sister to know that. Um, and then I'm grateful because I also have a husband who's doing the same for my daughter and our son. So thank you for what you're instilling in our kids. So thank you. <laughs> so at this time, all the fathers, would you please stand? We're going to get to all the men here, so none of you are going to escape without anything. But for all the fathers, please stand um, so we can acknowledge you and the gifts and love that you provide. Um, we struggled on what to get you guys as usual, but this year is actually something that we think you may be able to use because we don't know how to use it. It's a tool. So <laughs> yeah, we think, oh, you guys should know how to use it. And then as we um, finish passing out these, we actually want to acknowledge all the men here. So if there was any men that did not stand previously, um, please stand now um, because whether you're a biological father, an uncle, a friend, a mentor, mentor or just a male figure in this area, we need you and we need men to make sure that not only our young boys have leadership, but our young women know what to expect as well. So we thank you all and we value you all. And then hopefully today, I'm sure some sports game on that you'll enjoy. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So let's give a round of applause for all of our fathers, please. <laughs> All right, okay, you guys may be seated. Um, for those of you who missed the breakfast this morning, the fellas do have first dibs. We have a lot of yummy fried chicken left down there. So if you guys want to go containers of that, we have that available. Um, and then if there's not anything else, I'll pass the announcements on. Okay, well, I'll just finish up with the announcements because I know it's coming up too. So. Um, 
Summer camp, this is our last week before summer camp, so please make sure you register, send the kids to sign up on the 24th, and then also please donate to our scholarship funds. We have a lot of graduates who we want to bless this year. The um, scholarship Sunday will be in July, um, so please thank you for those who have given, continue to give, and then we will be announcing when we'll do the birthday celebration. So. Um, and a huge thanks to everyone who came out yesterday for the Juneteenth celebration. It was a great day. And I'm sure it was covered earlier, but this Wednesday is the actual holiday. So we wish you all a blessed and safe one. Um, and I'll pass it on. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I appreciate my keychain. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, happy Father's Day again to the fathers, amen, and um, happy Father's Day to you, Pastor, for real, like your, uh, your work is not unseen, I know times it may feel like it, I know times uh, we, I ain't gonna say people, we don't understand your, some of your, your, your methods, but it ain't for us to understand. It's for us to trust that the God in you is leading us where we're supposed to go. And if you're not blind and your eyes can see, we can see that God has been leading you and that you have been leading us. And we thank you so much for that. Amen. And I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I appreciate my kids having Papa D, 100%. I appreciate that. And um, if there's nothing else, y'all, um, pray for me and my family. We're traveling today to go back to Georgia. So I'm going to see my daddy tomorrow. So I'm excited about that. And um, just uh, have a good Father's Day today. And just remember, y'all, at the end of the day, regardless of what you do, um, it's all about salvation. Let's be very clear. It's about whether or not your soul is going to see Jesus. And I pray, I pray, I pray that that is your desire and that desire can be manifested through believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for everything that was done, God. And we ask that it was pleasing in your sight today, God, that it was a sweet aroma, our worship, our praise, our words, and everything that happened today, God. And we ask as we leave this place that we not leave your presence, God, that you walk with us and you talk with us, and that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, God, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our God, our strength and our redeemer. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the whole church say amen, amen, amen and amen.